Hi, I want to follow up on the video I did a while back uh, on the structure of crystals, the arrangement of atoms within them. Just by looking at one of the physical processes we can use to unravel those structures. How do we know where the atoms are, how far apart they are, what sort of arrangement that they have? Physicists use a method called diffraction to try and probe structures of this sort, arrangements of atoms. Uh, I'm going to try and demonstrate some of that today and we have some very sophisticated equipment for it. Um, piece of graph paper, blue tacked to the wall, um, a ruler and the key thing about this ruler is that it has a choice of scales. So over on one side uh, we have it marked up in millimetres the other side in inches and in fact the subdivisions of the inches uh, we can pick um, a tenth of an inch. So in other words there's a difference between the millimetre spacing and a tenth of an inch that is two and a half times. Um, the other thing we're going to need is a spring. This is a spring I've taken out of a barrow. I've compressed it slightly in these grips simply because I wanted the pitch of the spring to be a little bit less than it uh, than it naturally is in the barrow. And our, um, our source of radiation for these diffraction experiments is just going to be a green laser pointer. Uh, so this is our key component for today's demonstrations. Well the essence of a diffraction experiment is actually very straightforward. We're going to assume that we have a sample here, some crystal or other that we want to um, discern its atomic arrangements. And you'll remember in a crystal we talked about atoms being in some regular pattern within the material. Uh, that took all sorts of different shapes and sizes uh, as we looked at but the essence was of a regular arrangement in three dimensions um, of our atoms in this material. So to do a, a diffraction experiment actually all we need is to be able to shine some light through, radiation through, that has a wavelength that is roughly on the same scale as the spacing between the atoms in our crystal. Um, so a very convenient and much loved source of um, light of this sort of wavelength uh, is the X-ray. So actually most of what you'll see talked about I suspect in terms of diffraction is X-ray diffraction although you can actually perform diffraction experiments with all sorts of other probes as well. But let's stick with X-ray diffraction. So the key thing is that we're putting a beam of X-rays into our sample. Now a lot of that will be unaffected by the sample. It will simply pass all the way through to the other side. But a fraction of the X-rays that go in will be bounced off these atoms um, and they'll come off at some angle or another and in fact there'll be a different intensity of x-rays scattered at um, different angles. So what we need to do in our experiment is to have some sort of electronic detector up here. Um, traditionally in fact at the very start of x-ray diffraction this would have been photographic film that simply would have been wrapped around here um, and picking up the bright spots as the x-rays came in. But nowadays we'd use electronic detection systems of one sort or another uh, and these would give us a measure of where um, the x-rays were being scattered. Uh, and in fact what comes out of this, um, if I draw a two-dimensional representation of what's coming out the other side um, is of course a very bright area in the centre where our 
unscattered electrons have gone straight through. But then around the rest of this plane over here where we're detecting the x-rays coming through, there would be some um, arrangement of bright dots. Right? And this can vary uh, depending on the crystal structure that we're looking at. And of course that's the key, uh, the key fact here. So the essence of a diffraction experiment is that we know very precisely what it is we're putting into our material. We measure very precisely what comes out the other side in terms of our diffraction pattern. And knowing what goes in and what comes out, we can work backwards towards uh, from both ends towards the middle. So in other words, we can determine the arrangement of atoms uh, in our um, sample in the experiment here. Now, this is actually a rather complex procedure um, and nowadays it involves a lot of very high powered computers doing some really rather clever things. But the essence of it is, is exactly that. Know what comes in, measure carefully what comes out and work back to what must have happened to these x-rays in the middle in order to give us what we see. Uh, and that's the essence of x-ray diffraction. And it's this sort of experiment that tells us that the atoms in our table salt are, if you remember back to the earlier video, uh, in um, a, a cubic arrangement. The sodium and chlorine atoms are arranged on a cube, essentially, uh, that's repeated in three dimensions throughout the salt crystal. And we looked at other types of, of crystals as well. Uh, this is the sort of experiment that not only came out with that arrangement, but actually gave us very precise, detailed information about the spacing between the sodium and the chlorine ions, etc, etc. Now, our sample in the middle actually doesn't have to be um, a crystal. Um, we can put anything in there. Uh, that's um, going to allow our x-rays to go through uh, and interact with the material. So for instance we could put a glassy uh, material in there and that's what I spent a lot of my career doing in fact. So this uh, this would be an arrangement of atoms that is not uniform and rather than getting a series of sharp um, spots we'd end up with um, rings and they would be uh, progressively more diffuse rings the further out from the centre we came. And that pattern would then reflect the disordered arrangement of atoms uh, in the glass. The same is true, by the way, if we're doing a diffraction experiment from a liquid. But I think we're moving away a little bit from, uh, from what we want to do in terms of demonstrating physics uh, in the house. So let me show you how we might uh, illustrate um, some of these processes using things that we can perhaps find lying around. Now, as I said in the uh, introduction to this video, uh, we're not going to be using x-rays. We're actually using, you'll remember, a, um, a green laser pointer. Um, it doesn't have to be green. Green just happens to show up better and work rather more easily on, on this sort of demonstration. But this is now our analog to the x-rays uh, that I sketched in that previous diagram. All right, we've actually got a visible light, a green coloured light, coming in uh, instead. Uh, and visible light has a wavelength that's much, much longer uh, than x-rays. So we're going to need uh, atoms or things pretending to be atoms that are um, significantly bigger than the atoms in our sample. And that's where the ruler came in. Uh, and we had different spacings in our one dimensional crystal here. We had millimeter spacings on one side of the ruler. Um, and this scale in the middle of the ruler here is actually in tenths uh, of inches. And as you'll 
probably know there are um, 25.4 millimetres in every inch. So a tenth of an inch um, is equal to 2.54 millimetres. Uh, and that turns out to be quite useful for us. So essentially we've got um, something that we're going to pretend is a, is a one-dimensional crystal uh, and in one of our crystals the spacings are two and spacings between our pseudo atoms are two and a half times um, wider than, than in the other. In terms of our detector we've just got that sheet of graph paper on the wall that I showed you uh, earlier. Now in order to get this to work I'm actually going to uh, need to reflect off this surface. So what I did was to hold the laser pointer at a sh relatively shallow angle, in this case on the millimeter scale, uh, and somewhere over here you won't be able to see it very well in this shot, uh, but we'll get those arrangement of dots. Uh, and that gives us quite a good analogy to diffraction from a real three-dimensional crystal. Now I've turned the brightness levels down on the webcam for reasons that I think will become obvious in a second. Uh, this is the green laser pointer that I'm going to use and you can see that creates a very bright patch of light. So the first thing I'm going to do is allow this um, laser pointer to come off the millimetre scale uh, of my ruler. Alright, so you can still see a very bright patch in the middle there, but to either side you'll be able to see a series of dots. It's actually clearer on one side than it is on the other, but a series of bright green dots. Alright, take a mental note of their spacing. because the next thing I'm going to do is to let the light come off the inch scales and in fact these are tenths of an inch so they would be um, two and a half millimeters each so the same general thing bright spot in the middle uh, but you'll notice there's a series of dots still to either side it's a lot easier to see uh, on the lower side than the upper but I hope what you'll notice now is that actually these dots are closer together so our laser is coming off lines that are further apart but it's giving us spots on the graph paper that are significantly closer together uh, and the thing to notice um, in the videos uh, is that when we had our atoms, in this case marks on a ruler, that were closer together, the millimetre scale in other words, uh, the spots that we ended up getting on our graph paper detector were actually wider apart than when we came off the one-tenth of an inch marks on here. Uh, and that's a universal observation in diffraction. We get this inverse relationship between the spacing between atoms and the scale of the pattern that we end up measuring. So that's fine for simple uh, crystalline structures. The ruler and our laser pointer gives us a good demo. So in this section of the video what we're going to look at is the laser pointer going through a small metallic spring. Right, I've compressed it slightly in these pair of grips uh, but essentially that's what we're looking at. Now what you can see on the screen there is a shallow pitched cross going through that central green dot. The reason I wanted to uh, show you what diffraction through a spring would look like uh, is simply that I wanted to try and mimic in some measure getting a diffraction pattern not from a simple crystal 
of a few different types of atoms, two in the case of sodium chloride, for instance, but actually from something rather complex. Uh, and this is a mimic to the very early experiments done by Rosalind Franklin on DNA. DNA, you probably uh, know, is a very, very long complex molecule, which is in fact a double helix. It's one helix uh, going around another. Now, in the case of our uh, biro spring here, this is just one helix. It's on its own. So we're not going to get a pattern that's looking precisely like the pattern from DNA. But actually, um, what I hope you saw uh, in the demonstration we did when I shone my source of radiation through my pretend DNA molecule uh, is that we got this very bright bit in the middle where the laser pointer was essentially going all the way through. And then going through that was this relatively shallow pitched uh, cross shape. Um, and that actually, if you look at the early images of, of diffraction through DNA that Rosalind Franklin got, um, that's actually quite indicative of spiral structures when you're doing a diffraction pattern. Uh, and this gets developed, of course, further when you have a double helix uh, like DNA. It actually becomes much more complex. Uh, but it was from patterns like this um, that uh, the structure of DNA was finally, uh, finally analysed uh, and published. So diffraction is a really powerful technique. It can tell us an awful lot about the arrangement of atoms in um, simple and also extremely complex materials. So entire viruses nowadays, for instance, um, can be studied using X-ray diffraction uh, and the arrangement of atoms within them um, can be elucidated. And in fact, the uh, wretched coronavirus that's um, locking us all down at the moment has already been studied using advanced X-ray diffraction methods. But I think that's enough for now. Uh, we'll leave it here and I'll see you next time.